Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. Welcome to another installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. In this installment, we'll be taking a look at how to create some really nice quality 2D curves, which we'll use to later build some really great quality 3D surfaces. Previously, we took a look at continuity and its three different iterations in SOLIDWORKS, G1, G2, and G3. And let's take a look at what this actually looks like in reference to the sketcher and what we might be working with uh, some of the spline tools in the 2D environment before we move into the 3D environment. So first on the list is G1, uh, tangency. So when the cur two curves are tangent to each other, the angle of the two curves of the junction is equal when we turn on the curvature combs, which is showing the curvature of the underlying geometry. So here we see an arc. An arc doesn't, you know, obviously has constant curvature, so its curvature comb is all the way through here because its radius isn't changing, whereas the spline tool can have different curvatures and radiuses all through its length. So a lot of the time when creating splines, we'll be using the curvature tools to evaluate evaluate the quality of that spline. So in this case, a spline has been sketched and made a tangent to this arc. And we can see the connection is G1 because even though the combs are connected, the angle here is equal, uh, but the length of the curves is not. Moving on to a G2 connection, when the two curves are curvature continuous to each other, the radius of the two curves at the junction is equal. So this is a smoother connection than G1 as there is no sudden jump in the radius between the two curves. In the example, we have that same arc and here a spline has been made uh, or the equal curvature relation has been added to between the arc and the spline. And finally, we have the G3 continuous connection. And when the two curves are G3 each other, the radius and the rate of change of the radius of the two curves at the junction is equal. And so we see that really smooth acceleration of the curvature comb that's associated with a G3 connection. So this is the smoothest connection possible, but SOLIDWORKS does not parametrically support this. So we can kind of go in and manually adjust our splines to look uh, G3, but there is no way to you know, add a parametric relation. However, in a future video, we will be looking at a way we can kind of hack SOLIDWORKS and allow us to add or create parametric G3 connections that update as our model geometry changes. So I'm a huge advocate of changing some of the defaults in SOLIDWORKS that I find make uh, evaluating the curvature of a sketch a little bit easier. The first thing to do are is change the temporary graphics color to something that contrasts against your viewport. I personally use a white uh, viewport background, so I change this to this purple color, which I find looks really nice on the white background. And this can be found in system options under colors and scroll down until you find temporary graphics shaded and change it from default yellow to something that works nicely with your chosen background. The other setting that I like to change is the show curvature bounding curve under system options sketch. What this does is add an additional curve to our curvature combs that kind of outlines the perimeter. Before I knew about this setting, I changed the curvature comb options to be very, very dense and packed together. But I find that this is a far more elegant solution and really gives us valuable information to what the ultimate perimeter of the curvature combs look like. So let's take a look at splines in the 2D environment in SOLIDWORKS, the first being the traditional spline. And here is an example of a two-point spline. So this is just sketched between two points here. And out of the box, you'll just get a straight line. But when you start manipulating these handles to shape the spline, uh, you will you know, obviously see the spline take form. So turning on the curvature combs here, we can see that the spline has relatively nice curvature as we manipulate the handles and change its shape. The next example we'll take a look at is the traditional spline, but with multiple points. So I'm just going to show this sketch here. And what I've actually done is sketched right over the top. So we'll see we have, if we were to delete this spline and start again, what I'm going to do is start the spline tool and we're just going to start sketching multiple points. So that one didn't end up on there. We'll just move it over. So I've seen some people kind of sketch like this instead of using the handles, which I admit are a little uh, less intuitive rather than just kind of tracing the shape you need through multiple points. The downside of this approach is 
when I hide the two-point spline that we traced over and show the curvature of this spline, we actually see that we get a kind of a flat spot in the curvature. So rule of thumb is we want to have as few points as possible in our traditional spline in order to sketch the shape that we require. So this shape, we would have been better off manipulating the handles. We would have had a cleaner, nicer looking spline in the end. So sometimes we do need to add a additional point in our spline. And so one way we can do that is right click on it insert spline point and this is going to give us just another level of control so if we do need to add an additional point one thing we can note here is the more we manipulate with that additional handle we can start getting kind of divots in our spline so we want to be very very cognizant and and evaluate our splines when we do add that additional point one thing you can also do when the additional point is added is manipulate via these additional handles but I just find that as soon as you start manipulating them it's very very difficult to get a smooth looking spline. So here we have this kind of nice nasty divot, doesn't look nice. We have an interruption in our curvature. So as a rule of thumb, I try and stay away from the middle point. And if I do have to add a middle point to the traditional spline tool, I never or try to never uh, manipulate the handles of that middle point. Another way of manipulating the classic spline tool is via the polygon handle. Or in. And I find that uh, the polygon or is a better way of manipulating the, the spline and it keeps the curvature looking a little better if we do have to add that third point. So it can be brought up by right clicking the spline and display control polygon. And this allows us to manipulate the spline via these control handles and the more points in the spline you have the more kind of vertices in the polygon you have to manipulate. The other type of spline in SOLIDWORKS different than the traditional spline which was added new in uh, I believe SOLIDWORKS 2014 is the style spline and this actually operates very similar to the way the uh, traditional spline tool with the polygon works however it's sketched very differently the way it sketches is by actually sketching the polygon that controls it these kind of control line segments you see that as I sketch this I'm actually sketching points on the control polygon and not actually points on the spline itself. But one nice benefit of the style spline is that it always has really nice curvature. No matter how much you manipulate these handles and move them around, you're never going to be able to screw up the spline and kind of give it those nasty divots. It's always going to have internally a really nice smooth G3 connection between itself, which is one thing that the traditional spline tool sometimes does not have. It can have interruptions internally uh, in its curvature. So as a rule of thumb, I try and always for kind of general big gentle layout curves, I'm using the style spline tool and manipulating it via the... A control polygon. We'll be taking a look, a more in-depth look at the style spline tool in the next video installment. So to recap the different splines, we have the classic spline tool and the key to using the, the, the interpolated spline tool, the classic spline tool, is to use as few spline points as possible. We want to create a two-point spline and manipulate the shape of the spline via the uh, control handles and not necessarily by sketching it through a large number of points. If you do require a third point, avoid manipulating its handles. We can see the interruption internally of curvature in the middle example where we no longer have a nice G3 connection internally in the spline and if we do need to uh, additionally shape a three-point spline the best bet is to use the control polygon instead so here's an example of using as few points as possible these splines are almost identical but one was sketched through a series of points whereas the other was manipulated with the handles and we can see that we don't internally have that flat spot in the spline that we have with the multiple point spline whereas the two-point spline has really nice clean curvature with no flat spots and finally, the style spline tool, which was new in SOLIDWORKS 2014, is a game changer for service modeling, in my opinion. I try and use it wherever possible. Uh, it has smoother internal connections. We never get divots or flat spots like we saw with some of the previous examples. And we'll be taking a more in-depth look at the style spline tool and some of its options in a later video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SOLIDWORKS Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SOLIDWORKS files on the Demonic Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Happy SOLIDWORKS surfacing.